with one of our dry barrel fire hydrants up to a new grade line. The extension kit we are going to install is a one foot extension. AVK manufactures extension kits from 6 to 60 inches or longer if required. First, we are going to remove the weather shield retaining bolt with a 5 16 or 8 mm hexagon key. Then lift off the weather shield. Remove the lock plate retaining screw and lock plate with a 7 64 or 3 mm hexagon key. Remove the thrust nut using the AVK operating wrench and rotating counterclockwise. Remove the operating nut using the AVK operating wrench. Remove the upper anti-friction washer. Turn counterclockwise for open left hydrants and clockwise for open right hydrants. Remove the lower anti-friction washer and set aside with the operating nut. Using the socket wrench end of the AVK T wrench, remove the stop nut from the upper stem rod. Remove the six bonnet bolts, nuts, and washers using 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter wrenches. Lift the bonnet straight up over the upper stem rod carefully to avoid damage to the stem seal o-rings. The oil sleeve is used to contain the oil in oil-filled hydrants. Slide over the stem and under the lower stem seal o-rings. Remove the barrel gasket and inspect it for damage. If damaged, replace. Remove the four nozzle section bolts, nuts, and washers using 15 16 inch or 24 millimeter wrenches. Lift the nozzle section off the lower assembly. Remove the lower spring pin and slide the lower coupler pin from the lower stem rod. Be careful not to drop them. Disconnect the upper stem rod along with the breakable stem rod coupling from the lower stem rod. Inspect the breakable coupling for damage and replace if necessary. Remove the breakable flange and lock ring. Set aside for later reassembly. Install a standpipe flange from the extension kit. Ensure the standpipe flange is oriented correctly with the recessed side towards the lock ring. Reinstall the lock ring. Install the extension stem rod in the lower stem rod with a new spring pin, coupler pin, and extension stem rod coupling. Note the differences between the brake coupling and the extension coupling. Clean the top of the lower barrel and install a barrel gasket. If not already done, install a lock ring under the lower groove of the extension barrel. The top of the extension barrel is marked with a white berry line. Place the extension barrel onto the lower barrel, making sure that the barrel gasket stays in place. Slide the standpipe flanges until they rest against the lock rings. Align the bolt holes on the two standpipe flanges and install the extension barrel bolts, nuts, and washers. Tighten to 80 foot-pounds. The breakable flange must be installed so that the wording this side up cast on the breakable flange is facing up. Slide the breakable flange onto the extension barrel. Reinstall the lock ring onto the extension barrel. Connect the upper stem rod to the extension stem rod with a spring pin and coupler pin and breakable stem rod coupling. Note that the breakable coupling is equipped with a groove. Clean the top of the extension barrel and install a new barrel gasket. Carefully place the nozzle section on top of the extension barrel so that the barrel gasket is not moved or damaged. Slide the breakable flange against the lock ring and align with the holes in the nozzle section. 
Reinstall the bolts, nuts, and washers removed previously. Tighten just hand tight. Carefully rotate the nozzle section until the nozzles are in the desired position. Tighten to 80 foot-pounds. Clean the top of the nozzle section and install a new barrel gasket. Carefully slide the bonnet over the upper stem rod and onto the nozzle section. Take care not to displace the stem seal o-rings. Rotate the bonnet to place the grease zerker oil plug to a location convenient for future maintenance. Be careful that the barrel gasket stays in its proper position. Install the bonnet bolts, nuts and washers and tighten finger tight. Reinstall the stop nut. Using the socket portion of the AVKT wrench, Spin the stop nut down until it stops, and then snug it about one quarter turn tighter. Reinstall the lower anti-friction washer. If required, refill the lubrication reservoir in the bonnet with a food grade oil or grease that contains no acetate or silicone. Reinstall the operating nut. Tighten the operating nut all the way until it is snug against the lower anti-friction washer. Reinstall the upper anti-friction washer on top of the operating nut. Lightly grease the thrust nut o-rings and reinstall the thrust nut. Tighten the thrust nut until it is just snug against the anti-friction washer, then back off the thrust nut 1 8 or 1 quarter turn to the first location at which the lock plate can be installed. Do not over tighten the thrust nut. Reinstall the lock plate and lock plate screw. On hydrants equipped with a set screw, back off the thrust nut until the set screw can be reinstalled. Now tighten the bonnet bolts to 65 foot pounds using a star pattern. Reinstall the weather shield and weather shield bolt. Operate the hydrant into the fully open position and then close it fully prior to turning the lead valve on to allow the oil or grease to lubricate the operating nut. Test the hydrant for leaks. We have successfully raised our AVK dry barrel fire hydrant up to a new grade line with an AVK one foot extension kit. 